Welcome to the Jennifer J. Hammond Podcast. Jennifer is a licensed realtor, educator, speaker, and best-selling author. Jennifer's goal is to help you find your yay in every day. Jennifer is grateful for the opportunity to educate, empower, and inspire you with powerful conversations, insights, and new viewpoints. Here's your host, Jennifer J. Hammond. This is Jennifer Hammond, and I'm so excited. I love when we can bring you information that's going to help you, and one, put a little more yay in your day, but also, I'm so excited because my next guest, Shelly Golden, oh my gosh, we've all been spending way too much time on Zoom, so wait till you find out. We're going to talk about Zoom makeovers, and how can you look and sound great on Zoom, whether it's for meetings, for business, or whether it's the happy hour with all your friends. So let's let's hear a little bit about Shelly Golden. She's an international speaker, international personal branding image consultant. Don't we all need one of those? Yes. She's also a certified color consultant, textile expert, costume historian, costume designer with 25 plus years experience in Europe, the Middle East, and the United States. And she's fourth generation in the fashion and clothing industry. Yay! Welcome, Shelly. Thank you. So glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me, Jennifer. I'm so excited to have you. And this is is so, you just, you really hit this one. Everybody wants to look beautiful and they want to have a beautiful image and it's one of those things we're all on Zoom. So we want to know whether we're a real estate agent, licensed real estate agents, or any of us, we're just trying to, you know, we're trying to make it in this new video Zoom world. So let's start with the do's and don'ts of um, being on a Zoom. Like number one, I think probably the most important part is lighting because so many people are in this dark and why do you have a video at all if you don't have lighting? So let's start right there. Right. Okay, so lighting is, is so in my five steps of a Zoom makeover, uh, that's uh, step two. Okay, <laughs> but it's it's the first thing everybody sees. People notice when you're in the light. People notice when you're in the dark. They notice if you have light on half of your face, if you have a window behind you because it's t- it's sucking up all the light from the camera. So that's the first thing everybody notices, and I have some. Uh, really simple advice, and I have some simple hacks, and I'm going to share them both with you. Yay! <laughs> um, so to get the lighting even on your face, that's the most important thing, is that you want to put your lights, you can see it light on my hand, and light on my hand. You want to put your light at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. So it really hits the sides of your face as opposed to the front of your face, mm-hmm. especially if you wear glasses, which, which we'll get to in just a moment. So not only do you want to put them at 10 and 2, you want to put them a little bit higher than your eyes yeah. looking down. So it actually softens your skin and you don't get the rings in your glasses or, or reflection unless, of course, you turn, turn your face toward the light. But if you're looking to the camera and you're speaking to the camera, you're making a video for a particular house, for your client to promote your business, you're going to be looking in the camera. And as long as you have the lights... 10 o'clock, two o'clock. You could also get some ring lights, some some lights that have um, different colors in them. It has a warm, a neutral, and a cool light. And then my super tip of all super tips. Wait, 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 before you go on to that, let's talk about, because I think so many people have asked me this question and I'm like, I don't know. So with the ring light, there are those different um, warms and then the different colors of, of light. Will you talk about what what is the best for each skin, t- or at least for some of us for skin tone? Tell us what's the, the best re- one. The reality is you always want to have the warm light. Period. That's it. You know, it's like, why do they even bother with like the neutral and the cool light? Why? And the reason being is because the light coming from, especially if you're, even if, even if you're filming on your camera or you're filming on your, your laptop or a, a computer screen, the light coming from the screen is bluish. It makes everybody washed out. So what you need to do is you need to counterbalance that bluish light 
with something warm to create that peachy look. So, okay, now. Very helpful. Thank you for that part. Because again, I forget about that because I know that some people are actually wear um, special glasses to filter out the blue light that comes from the computer screen. But I didn't even think about it, washing out your face. And then we all, so we all, so the one thing about the lighting is that we all need to have two, two different light sources. They need to be a little bit above your face looking down on you. And then we also need them to be the warm light setting, right? Right. And you also, you do not want to be sitting in front of a window you, <laughs> because what happens is the camera picks up light and dark. Yep. It doesn't necessarily pick up color. So whatever is white or light gets picked up first and the camera balances out all the other colors and makes them darker. <laughs> so that's why, <laughs> when, you, that's why when you find yourself, you know, sitting in front of the window, you're dark or somebody else is dark. So Ideally, if you could put, if you could be in front of a window, that would be the ideal situation. You know, step back because daylight has the full spectrum of of colors, wow. so you get the most beautiful color, the mu most beautiful light on your skin, as long as it's not you know direct sunlight coming in on you. Right. But my tips. So this is what I do. So I use fuchsia and yellow post-its over my lights. And the reason I use it, lots of fuchsia, again, to counterbalance the blue light. So I'm a certified color consultant, so I'm really picky about what colors you wear, what colors are around you. But if you mix fuchsia and yellow, the bright fuchsia and the bright yellow, not the old, yes, thank you, thank you, that's it. Oh, and yep. <laughs> if you mix these two colors together, you get a peachy color which is really what you want to counterbalance the blue light. And it doesn't matter whether you're dark skinned or light skinned, this is the color combination you want to warm up. Yes. <laughs> and so, right here. <laughs> and this was not planned for anybody who's watching the video. <laughs> and so I'm actually gonna just show you my, my, my light over here. Um, so I actually have this light wow. with, with post-its and I can just kind of flip them over. I tape them on, you know, depending on what I need at the time. And so, um, and, and what it does is also by putting paper over your lights, I have paper, whether it's white paper or post-its, it softens the light and it doesn't look like you have a spotlight on you, which sometimes I think is a little distracting yeah. because what I really try to help you with is to increase engagement, yeah. that's to improve your rapport and really elevate your brand. And what is your brand? It's the way people remember you. And you don't wanna always wanna have people remember you with a, you know, a spotlight on your face. <laughs> Well, that's amazing secret hack. I love the fact that I actually, that's just very funny that I have those two colors, the pink and the yellow. Pink and the yellow. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. So um, that's an amazing hack. Wow, that is very well done. And and I know that, I, I know you said later, can we talk about the glasses? Because I've seen this is one that is just so, is so bad. And I, I've seen it, I hate to say more probably with older people who they have the glasses and they just are, the lighting and the glasses, it's just a disaster. You can't see them at all. It's very distracting, especially if you're in a meeting, you know, with multiple people, you just keep looking back at the glasses and going, oh my gosh, you can't see their eyes. You can't really establish, uh, you know, the very vital eye contact that we all need. Right. So by putting your lights at 10 and 2, you are, you are not having the glare in your glasses. Uh, another trick uh, so you could also get anti-reflective coating on your glasses. So that is something that you could do with your optician. But another trick that I do that I that helps me. So I actually have a big monitor. You know, some people are using their laptop. Some people are using a big monitor. If you take your your instead of making your zoom picture full screen, if you zoom it in to be really small. Then, and, and if you have dar a dark kind of screensaver, you don't have all this bright light on your face. Mm. And so, and also it helps you focus pretty tightly on your camera. Yeah. And this is, this is another one of my little, my little tips. So 
So, because you want to listen to me and I want to talk to you. Yep. But of course, you are down here. <laughs> exactly. And the camera is up here. So one of my little tips, and, and I really need to redo this one a little bit, is I have this little tiny piece of paper. And if I bring it really close, you can oh, see yeah! it has a Smiley little face. And, and actually, I'm not a happy face person, but I put it right next to my camera. Look at this. There you go. I have That's a smiley face. It's a little sticker smiley face. You can't really right. see it. And right. that part right next to my camera so that I remember to smile and look at that camera. <laughs> right. So that's the bullseye. And, you know, it, but the thing I, the reason I say like kind of something, something brighter, but yours is sparkly. So that's good. Is that it catches your eyes subliminally mm -hmm. and it forces you, you know, even if like one eye is looking at the piece of paper and one eye is looking at either yourself or the person you're talking to, at least it's kind of getting your eyes in the right direction of the camera and not looking down. Oh, I love it. And I think that that's one of those things that is so often overlooked because again, people are looking down at their paper or they're looking at something else and, and they don't realize we're still desperately hungry for that eye connection. You know, that, that eye to eye kind of, you know, I can't, I'm not in your space. And so I, I need to be able to see your eyes. And again, that's why I asked about the glasses because when there's that reflection on there, you start to look at the, the the ring on the glasses. You start to look at the reflection instead of looking at someone's eyes. And then you're just losing that, that connection. And, and again, the whole point of doing the video is so that we can find ways that we're connecting more, right? right. Exactly. And that's actually uh, one of the things that I really try to do. I know you have more questions. Is I try to eliminate all distractions. Yeah. That, that's the main thing. If, if everything you have looks good, because I really try to help people with everything in their box with the Zoom makeover, which is my five-step process. And if you can eliminate distractions behind you, glare on pictures, you know, messes, things that are not, not nice, and make it nice, as I say, like you want it nice, you want it pleasant, you want it cohesive, but not distracting. So I, I can't, I, I want to go through your five steps and I know I keep, I'm like a bouncing ball, but I'm one of the ones that I'm so interested in your opinion on is the virtual backgrounds, which I had a lot of fun with in the beginning, but they have a tendency to kind of, to, to kind of be weird sometimes. And, and I, so I'm curious on which do you think is better? And, um, in this, yeah, do you have any hacks? <laughs> well, you know, virtual backgrounds are virtual backgrounds. There's a couple things, uh, with virtual backgrounds. First of all, trust. This is what I've noticed in the last however many months since this is what, what I've been doing right now. <laughs> that it seems to me that people trust you more if you do not have a virtual background. Uh, that, that seems to be kind of the, the new, the new like theory, the new way people are feeling. That being said, some people need a virtual background because they really don't have a place in their home that works, that looks good. So virtual backgrounds. If you have a virtual background, you don't want it to be like such a bright color, so busy, uh, because again, it's distracting. You don't want any, I, I say nothing moving. Yeah. You don't want little things moving. You don't want the palm trees moving, although you don't have palm trees in Washington, D.C., <laughs> but you, you, know, you don't want the snowflakes falling. You don't want people doing things because people are going to be taking their eyes away from you and looking at what's going on, yeah. and that's what you don't want. Uh, I also feel that you don't want a lot of things. Like if you have your branding on your virtual background, that's great. But if you have so much of it in different sizes and different colors, again, it's distracting. And the main thing is that you want people to look at you. So what I say, if you're going to be creating a virtual background, if you take your hands and you're like, okay, I give up over here. <laughs> that's, that's where you want your, your branding to go. Got it. Okay. All right. So it's over your shoulders. Um, and it's, kind of even with your eyes. So, but you would only want one. I, I really think one is, is sufficient because 
they see you, they see the brand, they've got it. You know, you don't have to like inundate them with kind of like if you have one of those, you know, banner backdrops. Yeah. Um, like I have my branding over here only because I have this rectangular plane here and a rectangular plane here, which you see, and my eyes are in the middle of that diagonal. Yes, yes. And it's beautiful. And I love the fact that you also, this is what I observe also being in real estate <laughs> and being, um, I'm always also helping people a lot of times organize and um, decorate their house before they put it on the market, whether it's staging or just a couple decorating techniques. And I also think this, and I'm curious on your viewpoint coming from the fashion industry, one of the things, you know, you talked about, you, you don't want it to be too busy and you don't really want movement so you don't have distractions. But one of the things that I love is that you have some flowers and you have some dimensions. So you have something that's kind of close to you. Then you have things that are far away. And again, it gives the idea that you can be trusted. The one that, like you said, it's not a fake background. It looks like it's really your home. And that to me just builds trust, but it also feels like it's real, it's a home and it, it's alive. Like you have something live, you have flowers and then you have a beautiful painting in the background and then you have a really comfy couch that looks like you could go just sit down on it and go snuggle in it. So what are your tips for that? Should you have a couch? What about flowers? Um, okay, uh, so uh, just kind of backing up a little bit here. So yes, I think it's nice to have your real background. I think it's nice to have plants. Why? Because plants, trees, you know, like we, we go walking in the forest to calm down. You know, that, that's, you know, you go, you, you know, to go outside, it calms us down. So I'm a big believer in having plants. It doesn't have to be flowers. It doesn't have to be just green, but just the fact that they're there is great. And so when I actually just on the flower point, so just when I'm working with people and we're creating a, their visual in their box, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm hand picking, so to speak, the right greenery. Do they need a five foot high plant because maybe their desk goes up and down and they need something in a corner or do they need a little white something here? Or do they need something that's, that's, three feet high that has a little bit of pink in it. You know, so it's it's very different, but plants are really nice. And even if it's a succulent, you know, how do we position it just so there's a little bit something. Uh, so I lived in Amsterdam for 10 years. And wow. when I lived there, I studied the Dutch masters. And so, you know, the way that they painted was they always had lines of perspective and there was always the foreground and a mid ground and a background. And so that's what I do. I create a painting for you. What's your painting? So by having me in the foreground, which very clearly with what I'm wearing and the way I've put myself together, I'm in the foreground. You do not need a sofa in the background. You do not necessarily need art, but it's nice to have something, whether you have a bookshelf, but if you have a bookshelf, you want all your books vertical, you don't want some leaning to the left, some leaning to the right, horizontal, because then there's like too many things for your eyes to see. And also our eyes are used to seeing books in stacks. So then it becomes benign. It's nice, it's neat, it's benign. Um, um, you also wanna be careful of like dark furniture. You know, so if you have like, like on my piece of furniture, I have a light on it because otherwise it is dark, 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 especially on a not so sunny day here in sunny California. So, uh, so you want to just have a nice background. I do often have art in the background and it doesn't have to be that you could even see the art. Sometimes it's just the corner of the frame way up on top. So one of the things that I, I, I do often, and again, it's, like, like the artists, they have lines of perspective. So I often have like some type of art up in the one corner and a plant in the lower other corner. So you have this diagonal and it gives them some type of perspective, even if you're backed up, back up against a wall, because that's the only space in your home that you can, you can tape yourself, you can video yourself. 
have like even like I say, even if it's a the frame, a picture frame here, and a little plant here, it all of a sudden looks like there's something nice going on. Right. And, and in fact, all you did was put all this stuff against a white wall. Yeah. And I think it's really important that again, people have something interesting and it's not just a white wall, but I am curious about, you see that a lot with you watch um, some of the newscasters and obviously they're probably limited in, in their space, but what do you think about something being a completely blank, like completely blue wall or completely white wall? What do you think about that? I think it's really boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, it's like, you know, I, I, it just, it doesn't give you the feeling of, of welcoming. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like you can engage, but for me, if, if I was, if I were speaking to you or you as a real estate agent were speaking to your clients and they had just a solid color wall, can you build that great trust that you are this awesome realtor? Right. Mm, yeah, maybe. But if you had a nice welcoming background, that would speak reams in terms of engagement, building a great rapport, trustworthiness, and of course, you know, elevating your brand because that's how people will remember you. Like, wow, she really had it all together. And, and that's how I remember her. Yeah, absolutely. So I know I've taken you down a whole bunch of side streets, but you said originally you started us with, there were five tips. So do you want to try to go over them without me interrupting you? <laughs> uh, my five steps for my yeah. Zoom paper. Okay, so uh, in order, it's the first one is camera angle. Because uh, that, yeah. I mean, that's, you also see that, you know, you're constantly, you're looking up people's noses, under their chin, at their ceiling. So you don't want to see, you don't want anyone to see your ceiling. Ever. And you don't want, which means you're looking down at your laptop. <laughs> also, if your camera, which very possibly could be a separate camera on top of your computer or your screen, is looking down on top of your head, looking down on your floor, you don't want people looking down on your head either, especially for women who might not have been able to get all the, get to the hair salon and maybe have their hair in the right color at that time. So you don't want that either. So you want the camera straight in front. So camera angle, lighting is the second one. We talked about lighting. Right. Step three is background. We talked about that. You want it nice, you want it non-distracting and you want it welcoming. Uh, step four is wh what color works best on you in the space that you're in. So I'm a certified color consultant. I'm really particular about colors of what works on you. But again, it's what space you're in. So if you're in a room that has dark furniture or dark paneling or dark, a dark colored wall, you don't want to wear anything dark. Whereas if you're in a room that's really light and bright and white-ish, light, yes, you're going to want to wear something dark to contrast, but do not wear white, do not wear black. Reason being, again, the camera picks up white and light first. So if you wear white, the camera will focus in on your white and everything else will be secondary in terms of like, color contrast and not your face. And if you wear, so, and you want your face to be the first thing people see. Uh, and then in terms of black, if you wear black, you actually recede to the background, you will look smaller and people will not really notice your torso. And why is it important that they notice your torso? Because this way they could read your nonverbal. Mm -hmm. And okay, so to position yourself, if you take, this is kind of a funny little thing, if you take your thumbs and you stick them under your, your armpits, you should be able to see your thumbs. So you're positioned perfectly, Jennifer. Ah, good. Yes, it's kind of like the little farmer thing. <laughs> <laughs> because so many people are, all you see is the top of their shoulders and then they're just like a floating head. But yeah. being able to see your torso, you can see the nonverbal, how engaged they are. If, you know, and so that is super important because that, is what we miss on Zoom. That's what we miss from being in person with somebody. 
Okay, so I want to ask you, since you're seeing me on camera, what about my colors? Actually, your colors look really good. I just feel that you need a little more light on your left side of your face. On the left side. Okay. Yeah. That one's the one that's probably the wrong color. Oh, is it on, is it on high? It, no, it's on one of the light, lighter singles. So we go. Ooh. Let's see. Oh, there you go. Uh, all right. <clears throat> there's, also, there's also a new trick that everybody can use. It's not really a trick, but I just want to say step five of my, of my Zoom makeover, which pertains mostly to women, unless men wear makeup. <laughs> well, men, men wear makeup. Oh, yeah. And so step five is Zoom specific makeup techniques to help people focus in on your face. Um, so, you know, like literally creating a bullseye uh, with like the top of part of your bullseye and the bottom part of your bullseye. So for women, I, I do suggest wearing lipstick, a little bit darker color. It doesn't have to be darker, but it has to be a little bit redder so that people can watch your mouth move. Yeah. In case they can't hear you, the sound is, is not good. There's a nano blip. There's a plane going overhead. They can watch your mouth. And also uh, with just like an artist. Uh, how do you create a three-dimensional space? It's with shading, shading and contouring. So by shading under at your chin line, you're getting rid of that the unichin look. <laughs> yes. so, you know, so many people have that unichin look. So by literally, I mean, this is not daytime makeup. This is not to go out on the street. This is this is Zoom makeup, Zoom techniques. So you know, literally. I take my contour and my blush. I, I actually go around my chin line and I go around my cheeks, not on the apple that I keep white and light because again, the camera picks up white and light and brings it to the foreground. So I have no cheekbones, but I take my blush kind of in a sickle shape around my cheekbones. So it looks like I have cheekbones, but I don't. Yay! Yes, you do. And you look beautiful on camera. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much. I think, well, so we went through your five, ti five tips. So number one is the camera angle, right? Yes. Um, number two is lighting, which there's so many aspects to lighting. Number three is the background. Number four was the color that you wear, which I think, again, um, I'm going to say probably women are a little more aware of than men. And then number five is um, Zoom makeup. Yay! Yes. Right? That's right. Yeah. I think it's so amazing. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate the whole, all five tips, all the insights. And then I want to make sure that if people want to find out more about you and what you're doing, um, how do they do that? Um, great. Uh, so I'd, I'd love to have people contact me if you have any questions or curiosities. Um, so my name is Shelly Golden, and the name of my company is ShellyGoldenStyle.com. So you can just find me, Shelly with an E-Y, so ShellyGoldenStyle.com, and you can contact me, happy to talk to you. I do individual Zoom makeovers. <clears throat> I work with companies. I, give pre I have uh, presentations. I do workshops with within companies like small groups of up to five people and in real time we are going through all five steps so i you know even if you have your your company your organization i have groups of five people and we it's a two-hour increment and we just go through the steps up level how you look improve your engagement elevate your brand so uh, that is how you can get in touch with, with me and that those are different ways that I can work with you, your company, and your team. Well, thank you so much, Shelly, because we all need to look good for these Zoom meetings. And I, you know, I think that we're going to find that this is just kind of the new way that we communicate and that we do business, especially just as we, we found that it, it can get a lot more done sometimes when we just go from Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting and we don't have to deal with traffic, which I know you out in sunny California know, just like Washington, D.C., we have incredible traffic. So Zoom meetings are the way we're of the world. So Shelly, thank you, thank you, thank you for being with us today. Um, thank you so much for inviting me and for having me. My pleasure. And as I say at the end of every episode, please help 
someone else smile. So this week I'll say, help someone else smile on your Zoom camera. Yay. I am Deborah Hi, I'm Jack Canfield. You may know me as the co-author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. And if you want more help in getting from where you are to where you want to be, I want to encourage you to listen to the Jennifer Hammond Show 